Let's talk about strings and string methods. All right, we found us back in Telegram once more. And in this tutorial over here for the Java introduction, we're going to take a look at strings and string methods. So a string to remember over here is, of course, a type of variable that stores multiple different characters. So, for example, we can say over here that the variable name is equal to Kaupenjo, and we can store that word, right, or even that phrase inside of that particular variable. Now, let's say we have another string and that is going to be the occupation. And let's say for the sake of argument, the occupation over here is YouTube. And then we can print this out, right, by saying system out print line. And we can say my name is and then we put in let me put in the name variable and then we put in an I am a and then put in the occupation right here. And if we were to print this out, you can see it's going to say my name is Kaupenjo and I'm a YouTube, which of course is not quite right. We're missing something vital here, and that is the R at the end. And for that, we can use the first thing that we're going to learn over here, and that is concatenation. We've seen this in the last tutorial. However, this is actually pretty cool. So what you can do is you can get the string over here, and you can say that is actually equal to the string itself plus R. So this is just another string. And funnily enough, this over here, right, the plus right here is the same plus that we're using right here. And that is the concatenation operator. It is not the addition operator. Because, of course, saying YouTube plus R, I mean, that doesn't make any sense, mathematically speaking, right? But if we say, well, just take this string and put it at the end of the other string, all of a sudden, I'm no longer a YouTube, I am now a YouTuber. Pretty cool. But what else is there that we can do? Well, that's actually quite a few things. So let's buckle in over here. So this is going to be a string, and this is just going to be a normal sentence. And the sentence is, let's say, for example, hello, how are you doing? Right, so nothing that you have not seen before. And if we were to, once again, output this sentence over here, we can do so and it's going to work pretty well. Okay, but let's say we wanted to change this a little bit. So for example, we could think about, well, what about like, what about putting things into uppercase or lowercase? How would we be able to achieve that? Well, we can do this by, let's say, printing this out again. So we can say lowercase could then be calling the sentence variable over here and then pressing a dot afterwards. And you can see there are a whole host of different methods that we can call over here that are going to return to us the same string but modified. So for example, if we were to do two lowercase, right, each one of the characters, which is actually only the H over here, but that character is now actually lowercase. Interesting. Now we can do the same thing if we duplicate this, just clicking on the same line, pressing control D, and we can do this to uppercase. So for that, once again, after the sentence dot to uppercase, you can see we're going to choose the one where there's nothing in the parentheses, and you can then see, hello, how are you doing? So that's pretty interesting, but what else is there that we can do? Well, first of all, I highly recommend you take a look at all of the different methods that are basically available here. You can see to uppercase, you can replace certain things. We're going to see that in a second. You can look at the character at a, at a certain position. There's a lot of different things that you can do. Highly recommended to play around with this a little bit. But let's first of all see if this actually contains some. So for example, we could say, hey, let's print out, does it contain, does it contain R, right? But I actually wanted to surround the R with quotation marks. Now you run into an issue where, well, wait a second, the quotation marks are the end and the beginning of a string. How do I put quotation marks inside of a string? For that, you need to use a escape character, and that is the slash or the backslash over here. So you can see if you have a backslash and then you put in the quotation marks, they are now going to be represented as normal quotation marks. And then does it contain R? You can then say sentence dot contains passing in a string right here and that's going to be r in this case this is going to be true and let's just take a look does it contain r and that is true if we were to change this to let's say howdy you'll find that that of course is not the case we of course also want to change it here otherwise it's going to be a little bit <laughs> confusing so does it contain howdy that is false interesting but what if i do want it to contain howdy well we can just print this out again system out print line and we can say sentence dot replace and what we're going to replace is we're going to replace hello, comma, with howdy. And if I were to run this, all of a sudden, we're getting howdy, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Similarly, we can replace stuff, but we can also take a look at the character at a certain position. This is sometimes quite important that you need to know where this is. So, for example, we can say sentence dot char at, and let's say at position 7 over here, what is the character at position 7? It is the lowercase h. Now, how does that work? Well, if we take a look at the hello string over here, my cursor is on the left side. I'm always counting the symbol to my right, right? So I, I'm at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you might say, wait a second. The seventh character is the space right here. That doesn't make any sense. Or do spaces not count? No, no, spaces count. If I put in a six over here, you will find that after this, there's going to be 
the space because that is the sixth character. And you might say, well, that, that doesn't make any sense. Well, 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 this is a very, very interesting thing and also quite important because we as programmers in most programming languages start counting at zero. The reason why we're doing this is it makes loops way easier to deal with. So that means that we actually have to count the uppercase H over here as the character with index zero. So if I just count like that, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all of a sudden, the lowercase h becomes the character with index seven. So there you go. And lastly, and this is actually a quite important thing here in the case of the string methods, the sentence itself, right, if I were to output it after we have replaced this with howdy and after we've done it like uppercase and lowercase, right, the sentence itself has not changed one bit. Why is this the case? Well, because when we are calling these methods, right, this replace over here and this uppercase and this lowercase, that actually, if you hover over this, this returns you a string, right? So it does not modify the sentence that you give it. It actually just gives you a modified version of it afterwards. And now what I basically recommend is you just take a look at all of the different other methods that you could call, right? Index of, last index of, you can take a look at the ends with, there's also a starts with, there's a split over here where you can pass in like a regular expression, some crazy stuff. Just take a look at what you can do and just play around with this a little bit. This is as always the best thing that you can do, basically playing around a little bit with, with the code over here to hopefully understand a little bit more about strings. One last thing that's actually quite important about strings is that when you compare strings, there is a little bit of an issue over here, and that is going to be the following. So let's say I have a string, right? And if I were to say hello, right? And that is, if, if this is equal to hello, well, that what this is going to give us is obviously going to be true. However, if I read something in, right? So if I had a scanner over here, I'm going to call this the scanner, right? We're going to make this a new scanner. And I read in a string, right? So this is going to be our test string right here. Scanner equals next right and i would then say test is equal to hello and i'm going to write in hello exactly how it is right so i'm going to write in hello with an uppercase h you can see this is not the same but wait a second you say this is exactly the same as this yeah i agree however the equals operator here is not what you want to use what you want to use is you want to say test dot equals and then passing in this hello over here and then all of a sudden, if I do the same thing, right, the exact same thing, I put in the exact same hello, all of a sudden we get a true over here. This just has to do with the fact that sometimes there's an escape character at the end of a string, or there might be a zero with space or something like that. So do keep in mind that when you're comparing strings, you basically always want to use string.equals and then passing in the string you want to compare it to. But that is the general idea about strings, and that's actually concluding this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about arrays and their and their loops. Very interesting stuff. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.